Hi there, this is Greg Zahl, and in this video, I'd like to show you all the new features that are in the new version of Gaffer, which is my lighting manager add-on for Blender. If you haven't heard of it, just head on over to the Blender market and search for it there. It's basically a collection of tools to help you speed up your lighting workflow. It puts all the settings in one nice little panel so you don't have to go digging around for them, and also adds a few more useful little features. But in the new version, all the new features are around using HDRIs. If you've previously purchased Gaffer, this is a, of course a free update for you. So let's first go and install Gaffer. If you go to the user preferences by pressing Control alt u I'm sure you know how to do this by now, but let's go and dig up the file and just install the zip. You don't have to unzip it at all, just select the zip and say install from file. Then of course enable it and it'll take a second or two and there we go. So we can close this for now and you'll see all the new features are in the world panel over here, the world settings. There's a new HDRI panel down here and you can see it says select a folder in the add-on user preferences. So how this works, if you go to the user preferences, under gaffer, you just have to pick the folder where all your HDRIs are. They don't have to be my HDRIs that I make, they can come from anywhere on the internet and it should work. So let us go and find our HDRI folder. And you can just find the folder itself, you don't have to select any specific HDRIs and click accept. That's going to dig through the folder and all the subfolders and find all your HDRIs. You can see here it has found 123 and we can click show just to check which ones it's found and how it's grouped them all together. It'll try and find the different variations of the same HDRI, like the different resolutions, or maybe you have a blurred version. It'll try and group those together. If it doesn't work perfectly, there's a little article you can read over here. I'll put a link in the description of this video, and that'll just explain how it all works, and maybe you want to rename some files so that it groups them better. So, anytime you add new HDRIs, they should be picked up automatically, or you can come and manually click refresh, that'll work too. You can close that for now and you can see we have a bunch of settings here. Obviously we have a nice big beautiful pink box telling us that there's no thumbnails so we just have to click generate thumbnails and you'll only have to do this once or whenever you add new HDRIs. It might take a while if you have some big HDRIs but once it's done you'll see a big list over here of all your HDRIs. The thumbnails are just loading into the RAM, there we go. And now you can go and select a different HDRI if you want it. Let's just start a viewport render. There we go. So we can pick whatever HDRI we want. We can do a search. For example, let's take a look at some indoor ones. Then it'll narrow our list down to only the ones that are taken indoors. Now how it matches that is it looks at the name of the HDRI and then it looks at whatever folder it's in and then it also looks at the set of tags that you've assigned to it. Now the HDRIs that I've created will automatically have a set of tags. This will be fetched from my website, HDRI Haven, and these will be automatically what I've decided the tags could be. But if you want to add your own, you can of course type something in here, like bathroom, and that'll create a new tag. If you have HDRIs from other sorts of places on the internet, so you can select your own tags here. You just gotta click the little buttons, or of course type a new one in manually there. So that will let you search for the tag up here, or whatever you want, and then it will narrow the results down to whatever matches your search. You can also click the left and right arrows here to go to the next and previous HDRI alphabetically, or click the little random button here to fetch a random HDRI, just in case you don't really know what kind of lighting you're looking for and you'd like to see what might be possible. So, the other settings you've got, of course, are rotation, brightness, Contrast, which is effectively the gamma. And then saturation, of course, if you want it to be black and white. And then warmth allows you to adjust the color temperature. So lower warmth will be more blue and higher will be more orange. This is especially useful in nighttime scenes. For example, if I search for a particular one that I know, this one is quite orange, as you can see. So maybe we want to reduce the warmth a bit. That's a bit better, maybe a little bit too blue, there you go. Now under the advanced settings, you have a whole bunch of more stuff. There's a tint slider, which is also to do with the color balance or the color temperature, but this time it's only adjusting the purple and green tint, whereas the warmth adjusts the blue and orange tint. So you can slide this to go a little bit more purple in case it's too green. 
and that's just something you can play with. Mostly you might want to use this for nighttime scenes because nighttime scenes are notoriously hard to get the white balance right. And then of course we have clamp brightness. Now what this is useful for is if you have something that has the sun, maybe not that one, and it is extremely bright. Maybe you don't want such a harsh sunlight. Maybe you want it to be, well, you want to tone down the sun a bit. The shadows are too strong. So we can clamp the brightness to a certain value and that's going to force the brightness of the sun to be a maximum of this brightness. It's still going to maintain its color if it's a little bit orangey like the sun is, but you'll just be clamping the actual brightness value. So that's useful if you want to tone down the shadows a bit or make the light a bit less harsh. You can also increase the brightness then and we get maybe something a little bit more pleasing. Now further down we have controls for the background separately. Maybe you want the background to be a little bit darker, or much darker, or maybe you want the background to be brighter, or more contrasty, or saturated, or warmth, or whatever. You can control those separately here, just by turning it on and then adjusting the value. Now, the other settings we have down here are for memory optimization. To show you these settings a bit better, I've switched to a simple scene with a plastic sphere here. It's just a diffuse shader with the glossy shader and the Fresnel. Now, as you can see, the background is pretty blurry because we're using a very low resolution HDRI. Now, this uses hardly any memory. It's about 50 megabytes. But say we wanted to have a nice, clear background with some nice, clear reflections. Let's just add a plane in the background, and you can see how bad these reflections really are. If we crank up the layer weight, you can see that our reflections are really blurry as well as the background. So maybe you want clearer reflections and a nice, clear background. How you would do that is you just switch to a higher resolution HDRI, right? Now, obviously, a higher resolution image is going to take up a lot more memory, and it's going to take a little while to load, as you can see here. Once it's finally loaded, we have our nice clear reflections and the nice clear background, but it's using more than 2 gigabytes of memory. Now, maybe that doesn't fit into your graphics card along with all the rest of your scene and the whole cycles kernel, or maybe you just want to speed up your loading times. What you can do is, instead of using a high-resolution HDRI to get these clear reflections, is to use a low-resolution HDRI for the lighting, but a high-resolution JPEG image for the backgrounds and reflections. Now, a JPEG image is inherently low dynamic range, but it's only 8 bits per pixel per channel, whereas an HDRI is 32 bits per pixel per channel, which means it's using 4 times more memory. So, let's go and switch back to our low-res HDRI. We'll make it a super low-res one, just to make it a bit more obvious. You can see that our reflections are blurry again, and so is the background. So, how we do this is we just enable high-res JPEG background. Once we click that, it's going to complain at us that we have no JPEGs generated, and it's going to have a nice pink background. All we need to do is click this Generate JPEGs button, and once we do that, it's going to take a couple minutes to generate it, but we only have to do this once. If you want to do this for all your HDRIs, you can check that little box over there, but that's going to take probably a couple hours, so you might want to do it overnight, or just don't do that and generate them as you need it. It only takes a couple of minutes, or maybe even one minute at the most, depending on how big the HDRI is. Once that's done, you can see that our background is now super crispy clean, 16K JPEG, and we're only using less than 600 megs of memory instead of 2000. So we're saving a lot of memory there, about four times as much, or as little. But you can see that our reflections are still blurry because it's still using the HDRI for reflections. If you don't want to do that, if you want to use the JPEG for reflections to make them more clean, you can just check this Use for Reflections button and that's going to use the JPEG for reflections as well. The problem with this is that now that we're using the JPEG for reflections, you can see that the reflections are kind of, well, they look like crap. Whereas if we uncheck that, we have a proper bright sun reflection, especially on plasticky things that you can see there. We can see the proper reflection of the sun. If we reduce this blend, make it a bit less shiny, you can see that we still have a strong highlight of the sun over there. But when we say use for reflections, to use the JPEG for reflections as well, we lose that highlight because the JPEG is only an 8-bit image and it doesn't actually store the super bright sunshine. However, we have another checkbox over here to say pre-darkened. 
If we check this, it's going to use a separate JPEG image that was darkened before it was saved to a JPEG, which means it retains some of the dynamic range in the brightest parts of the image. It also means that you're losing detail in the shadow parts, but for reflections that really doesn't matter. If it's visible in the background, it probably doesn't matter too much, but if you crank up the brightness too much, you'll see that there's a bunch of really horrible banding, whereas if we disable that, we don't have so much banding. But we have nice reflections, so maybe it's worthwhile. And that is how you use four times less memory by using these settings over here. So those are all the new features in the new version of Gaffer. Uh, you'll also find all of these same settings in the toolbar where all the rest of the Gaffer settings are. And that's it for this video. I hope you like all the new features. Again, if you previously purchased Gaffer, this is a free update for you. You will have gotten an email from me, or you can go to the Blender Market and download it from your accounts page. If you haven't bought Gaffer before, I would of course recommend that you do. Just head to the Blender Market and search for it there. For the first week of this new version's release, it's going to be 25% off, so it's $15. And of course, you still get free updates for all the new versions I'll release in the future. So yep, that about wraps up this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.